Hey everyone, WandaBots here, and welcome back to Dust and Elysian Tale. Hold on while I get my timer ready because I was not paying attention. Anyway, so we finally figured out where we're supposed to go. Yep. <laughs> Maybe. I think so. There you go. And then I suppose there's a path to the left or the right from here. Yep. It's a good thing that they have a map like that. Yeah. Well, this game is kind of in style by the Metroidvania style of play, where there's like... It's semi... Well, Metroidvania? Have, have you never heard of a Metroidvania? No. So... Because, I, I mean, I'm very familiar with Metroid, and I assume that when you mean Vania, you mean Castlevania? Yeah, where it's like semi-non-linear, but like... Hold on. There, there you go. go. And he goes down in like one salvo. But mm -hmm. uh, it's like semi-nonlinear, huge explorable map, a lot of random loot to pick up that will help you can along the way power up stuff. <laughs> you can get mad lost. And like wall chicken. Whereas, um... Oh, I can't go over the left it looks like. Because I need to be able to climb. You'd think you'd be able to climb that. Look at it. Mm -hmm. But guess not. Anyway, um... But, say in the old, like, 2D Metroid games, and even kind of to the 3D ones, you could wander around collecting stuff. I know, I'm, big open map. I'm literally eight pickups away from getting 100% on Metroid Prime 1, and it's the only thing that's keeping me from finishing that game. Because I have all the scans. As soon as I get to the next area, though, the final area, I won't be able to get any more scans or pickups. So, it's just... Yeek. But I liked it how in Metroid Prime 3, they actually had a sort of detection system at the very end. So you could actually go back and you could pinpoint where pickups were so that you could conceivably collect them all without having to really go back through every single area. Ooh, that one has chains on it. Yeah, I means he's big and ugly. And crispy. <laughs> More mushrooms. Larger but ones, though. No, I, I dig this style of gameplay. It is kind of frustrating if you get lost, but eh. It's kind of my own fault for getting so. But it's also cool because you can wander off the beaten path and actually find cool things. As opposed to just, you know, just going linearly, getting your powers in succession. And admittedly, this game is fairly linear. Like, we wouldn't normally have access to this cave until we got to that point in the plot. But mm -hmm. I like how fairly... I mean, I've been playing Ocarina of Time again because I got it for the 3DS. I originally played it on the Nintendo 64. I like how open things are. I mean, you could go on tons of little side quests, and they don't feel like quests because it's just... It's not like you pick up something from someone and then you seek it out and attain it. It's... You come upon things in the world. Yeah. I suppose that's... One thing I'm not really enamored about when it comes to MMOs and some RPGs where it's you just run to the next exclamation point or the area that you're supposed to get, you know, the mission completed at and you don't really have to put much thought into where or what because it's illustrated so well for you. Yeah. Though I will admit I do kind of like the zone out and just do things style of gameplay sometimes. I, I think I like the coming upon things naturally, too. Like, if they give you a generalization like, oh, you know, you can find these in such and such forest, then I'd be okay with it. But if they say, if they have a little pinpoint on the map, then you completely disregard the rest of the forest and you just run to that spot in the forest. You know? Yeah. Well, I should, uh, you, I should show you Morrowind at some point. Because... Have you ever even seen how they did quests in that game? No, I only finished going to the port with my uh, reptile person. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so you didn't get very far at all. No, it was a friend's game, so I didn't really have the opportunity to play it. It was just for, like, what, one or two visits at their house. Oh! No! Go away! There he goes. Forget him! Take a look around! There's something horribly wrong with these mushrooms. These aren't mushrooms, Fidget. They are called bubble sprouts, and it would be wise for us to tread lightly around them. They react rather explosively to movement. Wonderful. 
Great. Apparently they go kaboosh. No, oh, more like and they, they drop throw stuff junk too, on so you. I, I'm just going like to like acid. GTFO. Nope. Nope. Wait, that one glowed blue nope. rather than. Don't you? E don't even care. Maybe it heals me. Don't don't even. <laughs> Fear is the most powerful motivating force. New. See, I figured they would explode only if I'm like near them, but no, they just go off randomly. They I don't assume that care. ecologically, oh. they're probably one of those things that eventually fill oh, up with false. enough liquid and they just drop it when they want to. Is that yeah, oh, the blue yeah. ones do heal you. No, the blue ones poison you. Oh, they poison you? Yes. Oh, I thought that healed you or something. It had a positive ring to it. Yeah, it did. Well, I'm gonna buy a couple more of these. And... You can buy wall chicken. Oh, wall chicken doesn't give you as much health as I thought. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... The cinnamon buns are good. Ooh, sushi. I haven't had sushi in ages. Yeah, we should get sushi at some point. I also want to get bubble tea. Yeah. Because our college had that, and oh, it was... It was good. I really like the giant, uh, what, tapioca ball bubbles? That's what they yeah. refer to them as. A lot of people didn't, which weirded me out. Yeah, because that's the point of bubble tea. But I guess that's also kind of the point of why it weirded people out, because it was something strange. All right, I think we're supposed to go over to the left now. I think. I just like chewing on them. Yeah. The, the one thing I didn't like, though, was running out of liquid before you could get all the balls. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't like that. Of course, they always sank to the bottom, because, well, that's what that's what they do. Uh, some of them floated around. I just really liked having the Thai tea variety with coconut milk. Mmm. I, I guess the, them sinking to the bottom is good from a design perspective, because that's where the bottom of your straw is. So, of course, it's a lot easier to pick them up. It's just... I don't know, by the end of it especially, it would be me mostly sucking up ice, which just... No one wants For that. For some reason, mine always melted the ice instantly. Yeah, and mine never did. I think it's because of the of the coconut milk, maybe. Maybe? Because I had taro, which I figured would have... Oh, it's creamy. Yeah, well, so is coconut milk. I don't know, maybe... <sighs> Thai tea? No, I don't think it was anything in particular. Maybe it's just racist. <laughs> Where am I going? Nope. No. No. Oh. Uh, Cutscene. Well. There he is. Look, he's in trouble. Ah, leave me alone. Picking on little ones, huh? You will most definitely regret meeting me. Keep wary of the bubble sprouts, Dust. Or this battle will be over before it begins. Nope. Is it injuring him, though? Oh, wow, there's two of them. Ow. Okay. See, it is healing you. What are you talking about? I'm in trouble. Uh, just saying. Perry, remember? I'm working on it. Do, do, you, do you see my issues here? <laughs> I am literally just getting clobbered. You should have flanked one of them and took I... it. It it won't let me go above. The... Oh hey. But oh. Fuck. Yeah, that one's no good, and that's a barrier. There we go. There you go. Get him. I'm still poisoned though. Just saying. This is much better, though. Eat fire. Yeah, chump. Ow. What? We just saved and you. there he goes again. You're welcome, kid. Come now, Dust. He's obviously terrified. Let's go find him. And maybe get out of this raining death. See, I think those were his guardians. I could be wrong. His guardians? No, they were threatening him. What are you talking about? <gasps> sheep. Sheep. I love sheep. Mud pot. <laughs> okay. She looks really ridiculous. So are these like little mud people? <gasps> oh, the sheep are so. I didn't think those monsters were smart enough to build a fence. 
I'm certain they didn't. Let's hop on over. You can't talk to the sheep. Lead me, O oh wise one. Get back here. Lead me. What must I do? <laughs> Come on. Let's get going. My sheep overlords are stupid as hell. <laughs> won't tell me to murder anybody. Freaking stupid. Your father's done going to have himself a heart attack after he hears about this. I'm sorry, Mama. Goodness, what would I do if you'd gotten yourself hurt? Ah, Mama, look! Those things must have followed me! How'd they jump my fence? Crafty vermin, those surface dwellers! She does see that I can fly, right? I'll be sure to tell her, Fidget. I'm sure that'll clear things right up. Hopefully you don't have to fight her. <laughs> back! Back, you beast! I got this ear spoon and I ain't afraid With to With the baby. <laughs> we aren't here for trouble, ma'am. In fact, we just saved your son. Huh? What are they talking about, Bobo? Um, well, they have been following me for a while. What? How far out did you go? I may just save the spoon for you. Uh, I'm sorry. We just came down from the surface to... Do I look like some country bumpkin to you? Of course you're from the surface. I think I'd remember seeing a talking, flying weasel cat thing down here. I think we got off on the wrong foot here. My name is Dust, and this is Fidget. Some creatures attacked a village above these caves, and we're trying to figure out why. Attacked a surface village, you say? Well, if that don't beat all... We underground folk tend to keep to ourselves. Got enough problems of our own already. I'm sorry to hear that. Actually, what I'm saying is, we got enough problems of our own without you surface folk bringing all that nonsense down here. So, if you don't mind... Come on, Dust. We're obviously not wanted here. Wait! That's enough, Bopo! You ought to get back to your chores before I take out the spoon again! Mama, I've seen them fight. They even got themselves a talking sword. I bet they could help. Young man, I don't care if their sword spouts rainbows and bowls of delicious baked beans. I don't want their help. Stop saying that. Pa's gonna die if we don't do something. Die? What's going on? Well, our healing wells have gone and run dry. And my pa's done gotten real sick. That's why I went out, to find some more of that water. I hate saying it, but it's true. See these mud pots lying around? Normally they're bubbling to the brim with mineral water, but just a few weeks ago, they dried up to nothing. But that still don't excuse you from putting yourself in danger like that! I may not be able to help your father, but I sure as heck ain't gonna lose you too! Mama! I wonder if those monster attacks on the surface could be related to your wells drying up. I wouldn't be at all surprised. It's been a couple weeks since the water dried up, but every creature here is feeling the effects. I'll bet those creatures broke through to the surface looking for more water. Mama, maybe these two can go talk to the lady. The lady? Oh, she's a sweet old soul. Lives deep in the caves, makes the waters flow. She doesn't show herself around here too often, and we can't actually go see her on account of all the nasties living between here and there. In that case, I'll go speak with this lady and see why she stops the flow of water. You do that? This can't all just be a coincidence. The attacks on the surface, your wells drying up. I'm certain this lady must know something about what's going on. Well then, I had you folks pegged all wrong. If you aim to help my husband, I promise not to clock you with my wooden spoon of justice. Um, thanks? So, you're heading down to talk to the lady now? You'll help my pa? We'll do our best, Bopo. Just don't go running off again. You got my word. Bopo. Wooden spoons of justice used for corporal punishment. I hope That's I can nasty. equip one. Like, for saving the father, we get this... The spoon is an alternate weapon. Uh, that would be fantastic. Smobop. Cool. Great. Great. Okay. Oh, it's a pretty kitty cat. What? Me? It's a flying cat! Oh. 
She's not a cat, little girl. She's a... I don't even know what she is. I'm not a cat, you dolt. I'm a nimbat. Is that what you're called? A nimbat? Yes, hello. My name's Bidget. Maybe we've met? Can I hold it? I want it. Just do something! It's trying to grab me with its little child hands! Don't worry, Fidget. Sorry, um, uh, what's your name? Smobop. <laughs> well, Smobop, I'm sorry, but as much as she might look like one, Fidget is not a toy. Hey! Ooh, I want her! She talks! I'll trade you. Look, I've got this box thing. Hey, Dust, look! That must be Reed's box! Hmm, tell you what, next time I go to the surface, I'll see if I can find a suitable replacement. Then we'll trade. Phew, good idea, Dust. You know, that shop in Aurora had some things. Maybe the shopkeeper could figure something out for us? Yeah, maybe he can make us some kind of fidget doll for her. After all, she's far too young to take care of a pet like you. <laughs> yeah, way too much responsibility for... Hey! <laughs> Not a pet. There she is. Alright, so we can go up. I don't know what is up. Oh, man! <laughs> well, hi there, big fella! Am I hearing the local gossip right? You and your flying mongoose are gonna save her village? What the heck is a mongoose? Quiet, Fidget. And yes, you've heard correctly. Is this the way to the ladies' chamber? <laughs> well, yeah, but I don't think you're gonna fit through this here hole in the wall. We had to close up the passage recently to keep those crazed nematodes from coming out and attacking the village. What the heck is a nematode? Anyway, seems to me the only way you're getting through is by sliding. I'd kick you through myself, but, you know, I got these fat little legs, and they hardly keep me vertical. I appreciate the thoughts, but I'll find another way around. Here, boy, take this red resonance jam. It'll open up the basement, and maybe you'll find a better way down there. Just make sure to avoid impaling yourself on them spiky rocks and thorns. Wait, your underground cave has a basement? How does that make any sense? Hey, big fella! What do you say to me serving your flying rat a big old jug of shut up juice? <laughs> While you're down there, why don't you make yourself useful and collect me my hidden stick? Your what? You see, I use this here stick to do my hitting, but I lost her in the basement and I'm honestly just too gale darn lazy like to go looking for it on my own. They don't have me standing around here for my good looks after all. <laughs> Someone's got to defend this here hole. All right, Blop. If I should come across your hitting stick, I'll be sure to pick it up. Man, murderous he, little creatures. I they think, like hitting everything. I think he was one of the better written characters we've run across yet. I was really hoping he'd teach you how to slide through the hole, but apparently no. We no. learned that downstairs. Probably on the way out. Anyway, I'm going to uh, say goodbye for now, and we'll, uh, we'll go talk to this creepy-ass lady. With a mushroom on her head. The mushroom on her head. Let's see if I can shove her all the way over to the sheep. If there's even sheep in this pen. Well, she belongs in the pen either way. <laughs> Look at her. She's all woolly. Now nah, there's another guy. Anyway. See ya. They're cute little blobs, sort of. They freak me out. <laughs> what if I can get her to leave the area? It'd be hilarious. Let's get going. This is this is too much fun. It's too much fun. <laughs>